Boston race relations were thrown a curve at Fenway earlier this month with reports of back-to-back -back incidents involving fans making racist comments. In one instance, Baltimore Orioles center fielder Adam Jones said that someone threw peanuts at him and someone yelled a racial slur. And then just a day later, a fan reported that someone made a racist comment about a Kenyan woman who sang the national anthem. The Red Sox banned that fan for life. But these are not the first complaints about racism in the hallowed halls of Fenway. Not exactly the picture of tolerance in Boston, but that's an image the Red Sox have been fighting to correct long before this all happened. They've been collaborating with The Base. It's a local program that provides mostly black and Latino kids in and around the city with high-quality baseball and resources to help them reach their fullest potential, both on on and off the field, hopefully in college. Joining me to talk more about this are Red Sox president Sam Kennedy. Hey there, Sam. It's good to see you. And Robert Lewis Jr., founder of the base. Hello, Robert. Good to see you, what were you looking for in a collaboration with the Red Sox? Actually, it was a couple of years ago. We had this great opportunity where our young folks were visiting um, Fenway Park, getting a chance to talk to the athletes. Um, one was them knowing that Fenway Park was their home field mm -hmm. as well, and. Um, you know, they've been great for us for not just tickets, but hosting us. I'm also having players visit us at the base. Oh, yeah. Um, and also talking about career opportunities within baseball. And it's been great with Sam, and we're continuing to build and grow off of that. How do you guys benefit from this? Well, anything that Robert uh, Lewis is involved <laughs> with, we, we benefit from. And, look, the base is somewhere where we should be. It's kids in Boston playing baseball. We're trying to connect with that next generation of kids, no matter where they're from. We want everyone in Boston to know that they're welcome at Fenway Park. So uh, our partnership's great, and we're ready to take it to the next level, frankly. I understand if it generates more Red Sox fans, particularly in inner cities and communities of color with kids, that's great. How does his ultimate goal, getting a kid to graduate from college, whether they're a good baseball player at the end of the day or not, how does that help you and your team? Yeah, well, I think John Henry and Tom Warner have made it clear they're more than just baseball team owners. Uh, they want to be active participants in the community. And let's face it, not many of we all had the dream, right, playing Major League Baseball <laughs> and wasn't going to happen for the three guys around this table. And it's probably not going to happen for most kids out there playing today. But uh, there's a lot more uh, that you can learn from baseball than just going on to the Major Leagues. And that's what Robert's uh, folks are, are, are teaching kids. I want to be clear also for people at home saying, of course they're going to do this. After this crap a couple of weeks ago, of course they're going to call him. You guys have been talking to each other about and working to each other for a couple of years, right? We, we have, and Governor Charlie Baker actually gets a lot of credit for uh, connecting, connecting us and putting us together. And, and yeah, we've been talking, and, and uh, John and Tom have been involved since 2002 out there in the community. They really okay, have. so a kid uh, is watching the Red Sox and hears about this crap two weeks ago. And the kid comes up to you and says, that's, that's a place for me, Robert? That's a place a guy in center field is yelling the N-word at Adam Jones. Another guy leans over and uses it as an adverb to describe a Kenyan singer. That's not where I belong. What, what do you say to them? We, right. actually, we actually brought our young folks together. We actually brought After our, this? Yes. We oh, brought, tell us about we that did discussion. It, we, we, we actually we talked to our staff. The interesting dynamic is... Um, you know, first thing I did is I reached out to Sam and let him know, like, we got you back because you had ours when no one had ours. Um, we sent an email to our board to get our board to see how did they respond because they were also putting an organization focusing on black and Latino young men and mm -hmm. women. We talked with our young folks and we let them know, not just at Fenway, this happens, right? But it's partly our responsibility and our role. That's why we're going to be that next generation of fans. We're going to be that generation that brings people together. That can't be the vehicle why we're not going. It actually, you know, honestly inspired me to know we have to be there. And as part of what the Red Sox commitment wasn't, it's not just black and Latino. They're also looking for that generation of young people. And our young folks hear this, and it's unfair, and they're dealing with issues like this on a daily basis. So we have to confront it and not use it to blame, but use it as an opportunity of what's it going to take to move forward. You know, and, and the task, I mean, obviously, long before this ownership, there was, a, it was what, the last team in Major League Baseball yep. to have a black player, what, yeah. a dozen years after Nin Jackie Robinson? 1959. Right, yeah. tried out and then was essentially yep. tossed off yep. the field. But it, it, Peter Roby was here last week, the director of Athletics Northeastern, who, and a guy I love, by the way, and I said, do you see any visits teams, obviously, all over the country? I said, is this, are we aberrant? And he said, no, you know, that happens everywhere. But then after he leaves, I 
that happened upon the L.A. Times. I'm sure you've seen this lead line in a story about what happened at Fenway. It happened again in Boston, where it has happened so many times over the years. Another racist incident at Fenway Park. Basically saying, without saying the words, this is the only place to say. How do you come? I mean, everybody, I assume, agrees he did the right thing by tossing this guy out, uh, you know, taking away his tickets for life. How do you how do you deal with this stigma, though, that is yeah. glommed on to you guys? Well, one of the things you have to do first is acknowledge it. It happens. And sitting down, we went down to John Henry and I went down to our clubhouse, talked to our players. And they said, Sam, this happens all over the country. Players said this Players said it happens in malls, it happens in airports, it happens in other sports facilities. We've got to stop denying that racism is alive in our country. It is unfortunate, but it's 2017, and I'm not sure how far uh, we've made it. So we have to acknowledge it as an organization and address it and deal with it, and that's what we tried to do Did you ever identify week. the fan who uh, we, yelled at Jones? Not at Jones, unfortunately. We didn't learn about the incident until about 90 minutes after it took uh-huh. place, so it was hard to identify uh, that person. We did identify the person who made the comment the following night. And I also want to clarify something. Uh, in our uh, 15 years, we maybe have uh, 10 to 12 ejections per night, uh, maybe one or two a year related to inappropriate, offensive language. Right, this is the Michael so, Che thing was it, suggesting all the evictions that yeah, night were I, it, relating it, to racial comments. But one is too many, and we acknowledge that. But I just want to make that clear, because yeah. it's, it's not a Boston thing. It's, it's a societal thing, well, The one thing that is a Boston thing that drives me over the edge, I mentioned this to you before the show, the station, actually, that you, your games are broadcast on, there's some people in the station that are not only in total denial saying, prove it. And I, I can sort yeah, of live with that. But it now yeah. moved to the point where it didn't happen. Yeah. Adam Jones is lying. Yeah. This other guy is, is lying. How do you deal with that? When, I don't mean, obviously, you're not going to discipline those people. You can't. How do, <laughs> when it's in the air, yeah. how, do you, how do you deal with well, that? Well, again, what we tried to do is acknowledge. Uh, we issued a public apology. We sat down with Adam Jones. I can tell you I looked Adam Jones in the eye and had the conversation with him, and I believe him. I believe that it happened. I have no reason not to believe him. He told me it did. I believe him. Uh, I talked to our players. Uh, we talked to our organization. Robert met with his people. We met with our front office and our staff to talk about it and acknowledge that this happens and we need to pull together as a community to try and make sure that we uh, give the message. It's not acceptable. It's really not acceptable at Fenway Park. You live, you're a Boston kid, right? Yeah. How do you, why is there such denial? I mean, you know, I had Marty Walsh on the radio right after this Michael Che thing happened. I thought Walsh was going to be really defensive when we played the Che clip about you know, the most racist, uh, uh, you know, when the Atlanta Falcons were playing and he made it right. in the most racist city in America. Uh, uh, he said, I want to sit down with him. I want to find out what he experienced. He's, but he's, there are others who aren't there. There are others who, this is, doesn't happen. This didn't happen. How do you deal with that kind of crap? You know, it, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It's frustrating and angry. And one of the things that I talked to Sam about, I says, I've seen too often that being an African-American that I have to prove to somebody who's white of my experiences. Mm-hmm. If it's stopped by a car or being followed in a mall, why is it that your justification makes what I say right or that I have to have video, right? <laughs> Even with that, you own it. We own it, and it's frustrating as hell. Remember, Jim, you knew this. In 1976, I was firebombed out my house in Boston. So I've used this opportunity to take a generation of young folks to say we can do more. We're not going anyplace. We're going to say black and brown. We're going to say we're great at this. And the more we do this, then folks are going to have to deal with their own biases. I find more folks who are afraid to have to confront their biases. What's your, if people want to find out more about this collaboration, what's your uh, website? How do people find it's, it? It's www.thebase.org, um, and you'll find out more. And um, Sam and I, we have some great stuff we're going to be announcing really soon. But I do want to make sure I'm clear. Um, we were doing this with the Red Sox before this incident, and we'll continue to do it. And I want to just give, like, really kudos to the Red Sox for confronting, taking this on, and dealing with it right away. Sam, it's a pleasure to see you. Jim, good to see you. Kudos Thank you. you too. Good Thank to see you, you Rob. Always Be good well. to see you, Jim. Take care, gentlemen.